Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about the 14 books that I read in April. April was a rough reading month for me. I don't think that I ever like DNF'd more books in a month ever in my life. Um, I'm having a really hard time um, finding books that vibe well with me. I'll get like a few chapters in and I'm like nope, I don't care what's going on or oh I don't like what that person said and I just click it off I return it from Libby like there are just so many books that I just haven't been vibing with those books will not be in this video I'm not talking about books I DNF anymore but that's why I've only read 14 is because I have DNF'd so many books in April a few of them maybe got halfway and I'm like do I just finish it because I need to finish a book but I'm like no I'm wasting time I'm wasting time reading this book that I don't care about. <laughs> Let's get into the books that I actually did finish and I really enjoyed. Like always, we're going to be going in the order that I read them. So the first book that I ended up reading in April is Forget Me Not by Julie Soto. I've been putting this book off for a while because I don't do hyped books very well. I don't I don't read hyped books most of the time. Um, and I've heard amazing things about this book. It deserves all the praise. It deserves all the hype. I loved this book. The heroine of the story, she is a wedding planner and she gets like the wedding of the season, okay? Um, like she has this amazing wedding plan, wedding plan. But then the couple that she's planning the wedding for really wants this specific florist and uh, she knows that florist. She doesn't work that florist for a reason because they have a history, they have a past. And so they have to work together though because in order for her to like work on this wedding, she needs him to work on the flowers. This book flip flops in timelines, by the way. So the present day chapters are in the heroine's point of view, talking about this wedding that they're putting on, that they have to be together to work through. And then the past chapters are all in the hero's point of view. And they're all like months or years ago when these two first met and first got together. And you're trying to figure out why they aren't together anymore, what happened between the two of them. And it is perfect. I love this book so much. I loved like the wedding planner part. I loved the florist aspect that was so cool. So I just love this overall. Both these characters, chef's kiss, amazing. Tropes for this one, you have angsty. It's an angsty romance. Uh, flashbacks, food allergies, our heroine has a peanut allergy. It does make itself known in this book in a way that's very interesting. Um, a forced proximity because they have to work on this wedding together. Um, great banter, grumpy sunshine, second chance romance, a tatted hero, and there is like a wedding involved. Love this, gave this five stars. Fun one that I picked up is The Gargoyle from a General Management by Kate Pryor. This is the third book in her Claws and Cubicle series, which are monster romances that take place in like a workplace setting. So our heroine in here is asked like many of her coworkers to go on this like retreat for like coworker bonding or whatnot. And there she meets the hero who is her general manager. However, they actually met like hours before this retreat at the airport. <laughs> where she got flagged down by security to do a bag search and they ended up taking out some like very intimate unmentionable <laughs> items okay um and the hero saw and she was mortified um but she's like it's fine i'll never see him again but no he's at that retreat no he's her general manager so <laughs> it's actually really funny i i had a blast listening to this it's probably my favorite one in the series so far and another unique aspect in this one is the other two books in the series are all about heroines who are humans and them getting with like monster heroes whereas in this one our heroine is a siren so you have like a monster heroine as well she like craves certain things for tropes in this one you have a forbidden romance because they work together gargoyle it's on kindle limited it's dealing with monsters and it is a workplace romance i read an arc for darkest sins by neva altaj which is her latest book in her perfectly imperfect series book number nine this is the romance between nira and kai i have a whole entire like dedicated video for talking about new releases. And this was one of the books that I highlighted. I'll link that video down below if you wanna know more of my thoughts. Like I talk like right after I read the book and like in the middle of me reading it. Basically it's a stalker romance. The heroine saves a hero's life who is a hitman. And she is like this mafia princess and she ends up saving his life. And then from that point on, he's been stalking her for years. So I really, really, really enjoyed this one. For tropes in here, it's an age gap. You have a damaged hero. Um, there's also a hero that doesn't like to be touched. He does not like to be touched. And he's hiding his identity. So there's a hidden identity aspect. Um, I hate everyone in the world, but you in love with a criminal, a mafia romance, obviously. But yeah, overall, I really enjoyed this one. 
and I, I really I love this series. Another book that's featured in that vlog that I highlight more is Ready or Not by Cara Bastone, which is an accidental pregnancy romance, um, but the heroine doesn't get with the hero who knocked her up on a one night stand. She actually gets with her friend Shep. So Shep ends up finding out that the heroine is pregnant and he's gonna do everything possible to make the heroine and her baby's life like completely comfortable and she doesn't know that he might be have been like pining for her for years. There's a lot going on in here. I loved it so much. It was so sweet and beautiful. I loved these two. Tropes for this one, you have best friend sibling, a big city romance because it takes place in New York, friends to lovers, hero falls first, not the hero's baby. That's a new trope for mine. And it is a surprise baby romance. Like I adored reading this. Next, I have a whole entire series. So I'm just gonna talk about it all in one go. Um, but first I did reread Ensnared by Tiffany Roberts, which is their monster romance about like a spider alien creature. Um, his name is Keton. He lives on this planet with other spider creatures. And then he accidentally finds this abandoned spaceship. He doesn't know it's a spaceship. They don't have spaceships where they're from. Um, and he ends up opening this space pod and Ivy pops out. He thinks that she's a pet. She's been in cryo sleep for years, ends up taking her back to his nest, where he quickly realizes, oh, this isn't a pet, this is like a, a person. And they learn how to talk. There's this big language barrier between the two of them. Um, and they end up actually falling in love, like Ivy and Katon, like oh, it's so good. And so I also read Enthralled, and I read Bound, which are the second and third book in this trilogy. This is a great trilogy if you want like just some fun monster romance goodness with like the survival trope because they're trying to survive in this jungle together. Um, but all three of these were great. They kind of blend together, Maya. I think number one is my favorite just because you have a lot of moments between Katon and Ivy by themselves. And in the next two, there's like more characters introduced that are like with them in their journey. Another book featured in that new releases vlog is Only and Forever by Chloe Liza, the last book in the Bergman Brothers series. I really enjoyed this ending to the Bergman Brothers series. This is the romance between Vigo and Tallulah. This is a forced proximity romance. Vigo opens up this bookshop and Tallulah is gonna help him out at the bookshop. Um, but she also in return needs help on writing her next thriller novel. And these two end up falling in love with each other. I, I love this one so much. Again, if you want to know more of my thoughts, you can go check out that vlog or it's a vlog sit down video. I don't really know what to describe it. Anyway, it's linked down below if you want to know more of my thoughts, but I absolutely love this. You have ADHD representation, the hero's ADHD. Um, you have an author because the heroine's an author, book lovers romance, but because both of them love books. She more so loves like the thriller genre and he loves romance books. Books with pets. There's a bunch of pets being adopted in this book <laughs> and like just being in this bookstore. Um, a bookstore setting, a cinnamon roll hero, diabetes representation, our heroine is a diabetic, um, forced proximity, grumpy heroine, and sunshine hero, um, hero falls first, opposites attract, reluctant to love, the heroine is, um, romance with disability representation, and it is a roommate's romance. I love this, end of an era. I love Chloe's. I can't wait to see what she writes next. I decided to pick up a novella on audio. This is A Fate and Fire by Amanda Boucher. This is book number 3.5 in her Kingmaker Chronicle series. Um, this books are right whoa, there for me. Um, so this is book number 3.5. I cannot read this book as a standalone, like at all. Um, it is like 136 pages and the audiobook is fairly short, but like you cannot read this book without reading the other books because it's about a character you read about in the series and what happens to him. He actually is in this fantasy world because this is a fantasy romance series, but he gets put into a portal because he did something bad in the main series. He's in New York City now <laughs> and he finds this woman running away from some like bad men one day and he's like oh I'm gonna save him even though he's like in a toga from this fantasy world um and so she's like oh I'm gonna save her and um he does just that and like turns out their lives are intertwined and there's a reason why he was sent to our world to earth to New York City this was a fun read I don't read a lot of portal fantasies so this was kind of like a breath of fresh air for me um but I definitely wanted more from it next I have The Cleaner by Kirsten Modglin Modglin um, I got this one off of uh, Libby. This book starts out with our hero finding a dead body in his apartment complex in New York. He's actually a cleaner. He's hired by like the police department to clean up crime scenes. So he knows immediately like there's a dead body in his building because he can smell it because he's used to the smell. And it turns out that it is his like ex love of his life, like his younger, like her younger sister. Um, and so he goes back to his very small town to tell her family what happened and to be there. And there might be like a secret there he never knew about when he shows up. If you're new to the romance genre, you might like this. It has like a suspenseful element in here. I didn't really see coming. I don't really get why the book is titled The Cleaner because his job has like almost nothing at all to do with what happens in this book. It's just that beginning part. So I was like confused, like why is this book called The Cleaner? 
when that has like nothing to do with the books like at all. I thought we were gonna have like more elements of that we've done here, but we didn't. Then I have Strong and Steady by Vanessa Vale. This is the first book in the More Than a Cowboy series, so a hero is a cowboy. The hero Grayson is actually like a, a fighter. He fights like professionally, um, and so he's like very well known in the community that he lives in. Emery ends up moving to this town, and um, when she meets him, she doesn't know who he is at first, and so he finds that very refreshing. And that's all I really want to leave you with. I don't want to spoil anything, but this romance does develop pretty fast. Their, their attraction is very instant for one another. For tropes for this one, let's see. We have a cowboy fighting, kind of like Insta-Love, insta, -love, insta -lust. Um, an older couple, because I think both of these characters are in their early 40s, if I'm not mistaken, which you rarely see in a romance book. Um, and it is a single mom, like the heroine is struggling with being an empty nester because her son is off at college. Next, I have a burnout by um, Rebecca Jenshack. I also want to just say like this heroine shares my name and I love it. It's spelled wrong though. My name is the correct spelling. <laughs> okay, so I'm um, actually also wearing the shirt about this book. Love that, love that Rebecca. Um, Jenshack ended up sending me like the book with the t-shirt in this beautiful box. Ugh. I love it. I unboxed it in a vlog that's going up for my channel members pretty soon. But anyway, this is the romance between Knox and Avery. So Avery is a um, Olympic gymnast and Knox is a motocross rider, I'm pretty sure. He's had some difficult time like with his motocross team. And so he's going to try something different and like try this like group that like travels around like performing like motocross like stunts and trucks and stuff and um one of his buddies who's on the team is like hey my girlfriend's friend ended up helping me a lot with like my core and like working on all this stuff she's a gymnast you should totally like see if she can train you or something and so these two are in forced proximity because she's helping him get better in certain aspects and areas um she's actually also going through um recovering from an injury herself she got an injury on her leg and so there's some discussion of chronic pain in here and dealing with that it also focuses on like Will I ever be the same again after an accident like that? Which I know a lot of athletes have gone through. So I love the fact that both these characters were athletes. Like you rarely see that in sports romances. So I loved how both of these just loved to like work out together and move together and do different things together. I just love the dynamic between these two. I love the banter. It was a great read. And the tension, chef's kiss, the spice, top notch. I definitely want more of these two. I can't wait to like see them as like side characters, hopefully in like the rest of the series. This is the first book in a series um, where I hope we're getting like the brothers books. So thank you so much to Rebecca Jenshack for sending me this book and the t-shirt and a few other goodies. Like, I love it. Next, I read our Beam Me Up Book Club picks, uh, pick for April, which was American Werewolf in Space by Alicia Sunderland. So this is our book club pick that Tiffany and I run for the Beam Me Up book club. We picked up this one, which was so unique. So our heroine is this werewolf who actually gets abducted by aliens with a bunch of other women, but they don't know, like the aliens who abducted them don't know, like they captured a werewolf. And so she shifts into her like bad A werewolf like form and like basically tears apart this spaceship and finds this like alien, kind of like looks like Venom, like look like Venom, okay? Um, and is immediately attracted to him. And she's like, what is wrong with me? Like, why am I attracted to this alien? He's like locked up in like a more intense jail cell prison. And so she lets him go if he promises to like not kill anyone. Um, and it turns out they're fated mates. So it's actually really fun. There's a lot of other things going on in here too. There's a survival aspect, a fate and mate aspect. It was a fun read. Tiffany and I had a blast reading it, a blast discussing it. And we're definitely interested in continuing on the series because this one kind of leaves off on a cliffhanger and book number two is about these two characters as well. And if you want to know what the hero looks like, it's actually on the cover of book number two, which is really fun. Tropes for this one, you have alien romance, fated mates, a female alien, wink wink okay wink wink um kick butt woman a language barrier trope a shifter romance survival and werewolves and the last book that i read in april is the autumn bride by anne gracie this is the first book in the chance sister series and oh my gosh i loved this i love this i picked this one up because i saw a few comments that people thought i might love this book and i was like oh, yes yes let's do it this book starts out like in an iconic way okay so this book really picks up at a moment where okay wait, so the heroine of this story. She's working at a governess, as a governess at the beginning of the story. And um, this woman comes up to her one day and is like, hey, come with me, your sister's in trouble. She's like, my sister? I haven't seen her since she was a child. Like, what is going on? Like, I haven't seen her in years. Um, and so she goes with this girl who come to fetch her and she takes her to a brothel. She's like, your sister has been kidnapped and is in here. Like, we need to, like, here's our plan. We're gonna get her out. Like, I wanna get her out. I wanna help you get her out. And essentially the heroine of the story ends up rescuing her, her sister, another girl from the brothel who was not there willingly, and the girl who ended up like 
coming to tell her about her sister, right? The four of them escape that place and end up like a, like creating this plan of like, we want to move to Bath. We want to um, have this like fulfilling life for each other. We have these dreams that they wanna fulfill and they're gonna do it together as sisters. They've adopted each other as sisters. They're living in this kind of rundown place um, where this book really picks up and the heroine's sister is like going through this fever almost on her deathbed and she's like we need money and she's desperate to save her sister's life so she hops to the next building over and jumps through an open window for a very wealthy estate and there she finds an old woman who has been treated horribly like she's like a titled lady and she has been confined to her bed like everything in her room has been stripped away her servants have obviously been abusing her feeding her gruel that like basically looks like glue like it's awful and the old woman's like i have nothing to give you like at all i'm so sorry honey like people have been stealing from me like and i can't get out of bed i'm too weak to get out of bed i cannot help you so the heroine is like oh my gosh these servants are mistreating her so she is determined to help save this old woman after that her sister is fine turns out she's fine she ends up recovering from the fever the four of them end up forming this new like identity for themselves they call themselves the chance sisters and they claim that they are this old woman's nieces and um they kind of bust through the doors and are going to save this woman anyway so the hero of the story is that old lady's nephew and he like hears about this he goes my aunt doesn't have any nieces what is going on and so he's like certain that these girls are mistreating his aunt or taking advantage of her but little does he know like no they completely saved her life um and like kicked those servants out of there like completely reached redone the place and like got her back on her feet so anyway i loved this one so much like i love the side characters and the found family aspect it was so beautiful i love this my only thing that i'm like so upset about is my libby does not have the rest of these audiobooks and i'm devastated um so i'm like patiently waiting for the other books to come in on my libby because i cannot afford to like buy all the audiobooks like that's not gonna happen i have to be patient and wait i'm currently reading a different Anne gracie book because like to tide me over which is also fantastic she has a whole series about marriage of conveniences and it's really good right now it's really good so i think Anne gracie might become like a new favorite of mine um so for tropes for this one we have different social classes found family it's a funny romance there's so many funny funny moments in here i was laughing out loud often while listening to this um great banter a hidden identity um historic romance it's part of a historic romance series the first in the chance sister series um meddlesome family members because that 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 old lady she she meddles in their lives okay um and it's definitely a book surrounding sisterhood so i loved this one and i can't wait to read the other books like i want to read them so bad but my libby doesn't have them I'm so upset. Anyway, so you have it. Those are all the books that I've read in April. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me like a bike or a motorcycle or a bicycle, whatever you want to do in the comment section down below to highlight motocross because of burnout. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.